Click the button. Click the button. See, now is when I decide if I was going to talk or not. I was, <laughs> but, but I was thinking sure. about making a joke about how we didn't discuss who was actually going to do the intro. Mm -hmm. But then you went live and we hadn't discussed who was going to do the intro. <laughs> did that. Yeah. Um, Isn't that excellent? Consummate professionals. Consummate <laughs> professionals. My, my beautiful Canadian internet, you can almost see the pixels. Oh, can you really? Oh. I need to click over to the stream and see yeah. it. I only have chat open because it makes my audio do the terrible thing where it drops like every single time I try and talk. Oh, that explains what that was. Ah. And for some reason, I my Twitch chat eventually. isn't working. But <laughs> And for some reason, chat isn't working. Yeah, that or they don't like us. Yeah, that too. No, that it's happens. working. No one's trying to talk, though. Okay, that that explains it. Oh god, you are pixelated! Holy cow! Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's oh no, you just sharpened up. Some. I have, I have, I have an upload rate in 2019 of 0.4 MBS. Oh, that! Hurts. <laughs> oh, what? 0.4? Yeah, that's terrible. It's got to travel here, you know, over the northern lights, mm -hmm. around Santa's workshop before it connects to a data center. That's yeah. rough. Well, everybody. That's rough. I would like to introduce uh, our friend this week. This is Kai. She, she's below me. She oh. is uh, our resident judge. She has sat in on the vast majority of all of the games that Lisa Lag Maniacs play uh, as our eye in the sky to make sure that we don't screw things up. Um, and somehow we still do, uh, but we <laughs> really do appreciate all the help. Um, no, no, I mean... There's only so much that, that five sets of eyes can do, and usually, like, you look at the Pro Tour, and they've got, like, 50 sets of eyes in the actual room, and they still screw stuff up. So, yeah. And they, and they yeah. still miss things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know PVDR was a cheating scumbag until, like, just this year. Ooh. And that dude's a Hall of Famer. Damn. So, I mean, you can't get them all. So. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed <laughs> to be here anymore. The DC Nine would say something. <laughs> But uh, well, you don't represent the DCI, I guess. You represent yourself, right? I hope DCI so, but... doesn't even exist anymore. That or is do they? Uh, does the DCI exist? Well, no, it does. It's Judge Academy that now is the because DCI is not the judging organization, was it? It was just the no. no organization. DCI was just who the judges worked for. That way, wizards could say we weren't employed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So now Good it's point. Judge Academy. So the, the DCI, DCI still exists, yeah. but the DCI, as far as I know, has nothing to do with judging anymore. Um, the DCI still handles Yu-Gi-Oh! Do they really? <laughs> yeah, they, they handle a lot of professional <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. They, they handled it for a bunch of different things. It's just magic was the one most people knew about. Interesting. Oh, that okay. makes sense for why they call it duelists. You know, what convention or convocation or not? That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Huh. Well, I guess the DCI definitely doesn't care then. <laughs> yeah. Well. So, anyways. <laughs> welcome to the How's monthly that review. For a cold open? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, as always, uh, we're here just to talk about everything that's been going on over the last month. November's been great thus far for me, um, and hopefully it's been good for you, Kai and Dan. Um, have we had any uh, fun games? Dan, I know you were at uh, Richmond. Yeah. How'd that go I for did. you? It was great. Richmond was super fun. I got to sleep in a bed. While I was at a magic tournament, that, that rarely that was happens. Way better than SCG Con. I'll, I'll tell you that. I, yeah. thought, I thought you were just going to stop that as I got to sleep in a bed. Just, just stop. Well, no. <laughs> but see, like, just that would still sell the joke, but it even got better. I got to have home cooked ribeyes. I got to have wow. a breakfast of bacon and eggs and toast every morning. I got to have a literal pound of pastrami and corned beef on rye. And, and on, you left. On rye. You well, didn't yeah, just wait I, for the next Magic Fest? Nah, that. Uh, so honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this time to to talk about something that made me really sad there because it was a fantastic trip. I'm gonna start with the sad and we'll end with the awesome. 
the sad part was everything outside of the command zone in all honesty oh. i saw so many players full sell out of magic i saw hundreds of thousands of dollars being sold out in uh, like every single time i went by a vendor there was at least one person selling thousands and thousands of cards i have seen full soil full foil cubes directly sold Wow. I watched a guy part with an entire thick binder full of dual lands. Um, Jeez. Tons of people were selling out. I first, at first I was going to ask if it was just like people trying to get out of standard right with all the Oko and everything, but no. not much. Oof. Well, Star not City dropped fast. Legacy. Yeah. So yeah. a bunch right. of Legacy players sold out. Uh, a bunch of standard players were like, people were dumping Pioneer staples because they'd spiked. Like that stuff, I'm willing to write off. The stuff that didn't make me happy was the full collection spanning legacy through standard and the foil cubes and like rarity kind of collector's items. Yeah, those are, are hard to see go. Being sold. Yeah, like those yeah. don't sell well. So it's not great. Um, mm -hmm. 350 people at the main event. That is down from 4,000 when I went a few years ago. This main event was yeah. standard? Yeah, it was standard at like oh, well. the height of Oko's. Destruction. Yeah, this is pre pre Broco and that was, yeah, yeah, and that was the first modern GP there. So like, oh, big wow. difference levels. Yeah. Uh -huh. like three hundred and fifty people th at a no, GP I, event. I've I've been to one GP in my life, and it felt like there must have been thousands of people. It just it was at, coming from like a small town LGS to going to your first GP. It's like there's oh, yeah. too many people here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So in that sense, I did enjoy that the GP was basically dead because there was so much space. There were free tables <laughs> everywhere you looked. Um, the, it was so actually there were it was easier to find a free table to play EDH in the active side event section than it was to find a vendor to sell cards to. How's that for wow. seat availability? There and, were like a thousand was, times more seats to play than to sell. Jeez. And and was it Richmond or was another one where you said that all of the vendors had like no Oko signs? Oh, that was also Richmond. Yeah. They they were not <laughs> buying Oko at all anywhere. Oh yeah. They, no, they were sold out of Noxious Grasp on Thursday. <laughs> they were like I'm not kidding. The entire hall sold out of Noxious Grasp by by like Friday. <gasps> Somebody um, says, Hey, I need an how, how does yeah. Noxious Grasp lead yeah. in like eight thousand players hold there's copy of? Yeah. Yeah. The um the RK Post Elk tokens that you could like slide over the cards, those things are super cool, sold out instantly on Thursday. Oh too. yeah. You oh, yeah. probably only 100%. brought like fifty, not the, the like five thousand that the demand was there for. Yeah. But so that was kind of cool. But the good stuff, Command Zone was still awesome. It was nowhere near as big as Vegas, nowhere near as packed as Vegas, but that's okay. I got some great games in with a whole bunch of people. I got to meet a whole crew that had come from Brooklyn, or Brooklyn from King's Games. They were awesome. And they uh, they like make these custom proxies that I got some of that are super cool. So this is like a foil oh, masterpiece wow. frame arcane signet. Oh, wow. They have that is like MTGO art, full art duels, or like super art, no border kind of duels. Mm -hmm. And there were uh, expedition fetches, but done with the like champs promo uh, full art. Yeah. Box. Oh yeah, wow. Full art treatment. So like they're they're absolutely gorgeous. So I got I got all these for uh for my like competitive stuff. Nice. Man, are they beautiful? Uh, but also had some awesome games. Got to play against Mirin. With like he had like five different Mirins, three of them were altered or something, and two of them were like custom printed stuff. I got <laughs> to play against uh, Timna Silas Citadel, uh, interesting. Which like was doing like wishing well shenanigans with Silas, which was actually pretty solid. I, I love got to play well. against an intentionally okay. Niv Mizzet reborn food chain deck, huh. um, because. And it paid off in grindy games. He intentionally decided, I'm going to tweak my deck to max out on Niv. He drew like 17 cards off the Niv over three casts <laughs> in Jeez. our in our like marathon wow. consult grind fest game. Uh, that moment when you take out Negate for Dovin's Vito and feel so like, legitimately, <laughs> yeah. Like he was playing some awkward cards in there mm -hmm. because it was just because extra card draw, and it, any yeah. effect was better than no effect. Huh. Um, and uh oh 
did not see a single flash anywhere at any table the entire wow, wow. or hear anyone playing uh so Braden, not a double-sided lily play mat but the mirren player had a pomp like a pomp like an actual pompadour <laughs> and he was the coolest guy i've ever seen <laughs> but like i i never thought i would see one of those in real life outside of like anime or something but it worked <laughs> it i always saw it in anime and i was like that would be disgusting in real life but like no dude was just fucking rocking it nice Beautiful. it was sweet <laughs> Yeah, I got I got to meet some really cool people. One of them's even coming by. Uh, one of them's even come by my LGS in the next few uh, few months. Uh, Satpal, he's coming by in February for a conference, so I'm gonna get to play with him. Like, nice. I don't know. I just met so many really cool people there. It was awesome. That's the I, best part about. Yeah, and now you have to drag I, all of them to places like Play EDH, so you can just play with them every. Oh, week. and Philosophy Blast. I don't remember who won a single game. <laughs> <laughs> not even a little bit nice it looks like it was, that uh, that guy might be in chat bloody nine he's saying that's him he's the, he's uh, the yeah. Marin with the pompadour nice yeah. Al- alan right <laughs> not uh. to like dox you in public <laughs> dox i'm only you, like 90 percent sure i remember your name i, I feel like i feel like i feel like audibly. naming him as alan or any name is less doxing him than saying he's the one with the five Marins in the ball. <laughs> that was awesome. It was great. <laughs> Big facts. Yeah, yeah. He's got. Instagram. He's got. Uh, he's got an Instagram. Someone. Uh, someone approved the. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. He was taking pictures awesome. while we were playing. We had some sweet stacks. We had. Uh, there was one. Uh, you should. You should link that picture you took of that like ten card stack where we were fighting over nonsense. That one was good, and none of it mattered. <laughs> nice because <laughs> there was like a, a top deck fluster storm with one draw trigger and it just wiped the whole stack <laughs> it was, it was so oh, crazy. i think i found yeah, him but super. i don't know where the actual how far down we gotta go but yep ramp gang we yeah are... so it was awesome yeah do that it was great so that was richmond i had a, i had an awesome time it was super fun Magic is dying, but EDH is the best thing ever, and it's growing. So yes, be on the 100%. right side. Play EDH. I uh, I finally got to have a, and you have to remember this is this is from a casual player's point of view. This was like casual pre-con level Magic, and I managed to be in a game the other day with a stack of more than fifteen spells, where all four players had at least one spell or ability on the stack. Okay, I have to ask. Was there a hive mind, a dream halls, no. or eye of the storm in play? Yeah, okay, no, no copies. No, no copies. copies. These were all legit. One person, one person played a Narset's reversal, so that was the only copy on the stack. Everything wow. else was rock cards from hand or like a future side effect. That's insane. No, every single, every single one of them. It was like somebody was trying. What was it? Somebody uh, had a uh, Bruna, the uh, Aura Voltron Bruna, uh-huh. uh, the original one. And was about to cast an en- is it Enchanted Evening where all of your permanents are have a yeah, or hex yeah. proof? They uh, they had that privileged on the stack. Position, privileged position. Yeah. Yeah. They had like that on the stack. Back, yeah, and so the player the the the, the, the one of the opponents said, Okay, uh, we'll counter spell. And so the Brea player said, Pact of negation. And I'm sitting here like, I thought this was a casual game. No, hold on. <laughs> what is, what's what's on? going on? And so the third player is like Pact of Negation, and I'm like, what? Oh, we've entered a new realm here. And so the first player played. Uh, it, it just started going up and up and up. And actually, almost the exact same situation happened to me yesterday again. But the stack only went up to like eight or nine or something. But then this one, what ended up happening is we got to the point where I wanted to cast a. Uh, I wanted to cast a Chaos Warp on the Bruna before this finally stack resolved, but I didn't have enough mana, so I said, you know what, screw it, Pact of the Titan, <laughs> sack it to Ashnod's Altar, <laughs> cast Chaos Warp. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, that's... Me- just... message, message deleted, message deleted, message yeah, deleted. Yeah, I don't quite know what happened with Nightbot, sorry, Bloody Nine. It looks uh, like he just nuked yeah. everything. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody nine. How embarrassing. 
Uh, the over. Yeah. Affinity is a deck again. Yes. Yeah. But um no, that I so sounds insane. I have noticed that a lot of casual games have been getting a lot more interactive and I approve. I oh, ever absolutely so much approve. Playing playing more than enough mid and casual level. It's gotten to the point where I don't have to sit here and go do I need to hold up removal or something? Because it's gone to the point where I know that the fact that two of my opponents have untapped lands isn't just because they had a bad turn. It's because they're holding something up, right? The amount of, like, Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decays, mm -hmm. Negates. It's just like, if you're playing a blue deck, it just seems like, all right, well, I'll just throw in, like, two or three counter spells so I have a little more interaction. And it, yeah. It's honestly, it's not that casuals are getting more powerful. It's just that casual decks seem to including more interaction and more card draw, even if it's, like, confirm suspicions, right? Counter-target spell, investigate three times for five mana. Not a great card, but but the casual decks are starting to include more and more interaction, and I really like it. It really makes the game less one-sided. Because oh, yeah. that's a big problem casual game have. It's just, like, one player slams a single threat, and that threat happens to have trample, and, oh, well, there goes the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the snowball effect of an unanswered threat is ridiculous. Colossal Dreadmaw winning games since yeah. 2018. And that's what I've been doing with the Glacial Chasm in my Golos deck. Turns out <laughs> people casually just like can't interact they with can. a literal single land at all no. in any way. Yeah, like one of my one of my friend Will, he came with us to Richmond. He's the guy from Dual Nature. He realized while I was playing against him, exactly one of his five like verging on pub stomp level casual decks only one could even at, in any way destroy bounce anything interact with glacial chasm <laughs> wow so so he was stone dead with four of his five decks yeah <laughs> to a single land that i could just put back into play <laughs> yeah. I, i've uh, i've been seeing a lot of people and i think it might have to do with the precons as well a lot of the older precons uh, are starting to become more and more popular to play in the casual level and a lot of them included Desert Twister, just six mana blow up any permanent. So yes. I've been seeing a lot more Desert Twister coming around, which is just fantastic. It's like, ah, oh, I have a random bomb, six mana, no. Blow up your one land. Yeah. <laughs> or, or have a progenitor mimic come in as somebody's reclamation stage just to blow up a smothering tithe. I have it's seen that. It's just great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like that a lot. I'm... I'm happy with the way Commander's going, and it's been really great. Yeah. Um, that was so. That was Richmond. Um, Kai, have you had any fun games here in the last bit? Yes, I wasn't playing it, but I was uh, over at the the Time Twisted tournament, which is coming up. There's their third one. Mm -hmm. They've been getting in a lot of. I don't know what you'd call it. In in an esport, you'd call it a scrim, right? Where two teams play against each other, just you know, to mm -hmm. practice. And so there's been a lot of those, and I happened to sit in on one, and a player ended up winning the game on the back of Tender Shoot Dryad, because they had thrown it into their uh, Thrasios Timna deck, just because they, their local meta had so many players who were either playing slower grinder games or ad nauseum Necropotence games, and the incremental damage from a bunch of 3-3 Sapperlings just made the difference. And so by the end of it, they had maybe four or five sapperlings and that's just all you need right one turn of the table and you've got nine power worth of attackers mm -hmm. three three sapperlings happen to go through let's see timna thrasios every mana dork right the <laughs> list goes on it's just being a three three is good and yeah. because you know he throws out his own timna suddenly those three threes are drawing him three cards gaining you know, like well i guess not gaining losing him three life but and and no, he just ended up winning on the back of that because he had decided to slam into one opponent as the only opponent left that could really do anything, and that oh, yeah. opponent flipped over the only card in their hand, and they were on four life, and it was an ad nauseum, and they happened to kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the only option they had. Yeah. No, that's solid. Tender Shoot Dryad oh, so is good. one of those that I I always want to try to stick into decks. It just feels so strong, but the the meta has to be in a in a grind fest if the meta does, is yeah. on flash if everybody's on flash and they haven't quite shifted to the consult grind fests that pretty much everybody's on now then it doesn't work but yeah no i th i think as the meta becomes more and more mid-range oriented where 
more people are interacting with the stack and less people are interacting directly with creatures and other permanents, you're going to mm-hmm. start seeing cards like Tender Shoot Dried or other powerful, um, grindy type cards suddenly become relevant. And eventually you go full circle where oh, yeah. somebody wins the game with a Shivan Dragon because it's become the best mid range creature. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, going on the stack. I can dream. <laughs> it would be fun. Oh, man. Uh, but then you have Baneslayer Angel that counters it, like, hardcore. Yep. Um, Baneslayer Angel, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mana Gorge or Hydra, same thing. Three mana, one, one, nobody wants to counter it. But it, it's it's a Mystic Remora if Mystic Remora could punch you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's not do you pay the one, it's do you take the ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty that's, convincing, honestly. Yeah, that is a pretty good point. Uh and that's another thing with those creatures, right? Like, you look at Mana Gorge or Hydra or, or Tender Shoot Dryad, and you're thinking, do I use a counterspell on a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2? Two, two? It might get a little out of hand, but whatever. Like, do I, do I bother wasting premium removal on a creature that's not going to win them the game right now? And then three turns later, you realize that, you know, somebody tried to storm off, and that, you know, 1-1 mm-hmm. one, one is now a 60-60, and you're in trouble. Yeah, that's that's why the uh, Ishai decks that were around for a little bit just got insane. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw any of the Bruce Ishais where it was just Jeskai stacks that would slam a four mana one one flyer that turned into a twenty twenty and would one shot people. Um, yeah. Oh, and I've seen it like some of the precons uh, in uh, C sixteen. I know the Saskian one included both Mana Gorger and Torin Mauler, the Changeling one. Mm-hmm. But, but, and of course, Ishai was there too. And there's just, I don't know what you, that mechanic is. I guess it's just the Mana Gorger or the, or the Torin Mauler, because I don't know what the original one was. But I really like that. And as soon as they print like a four color commander that does that and draws you cards. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think Torin Mauler was broke. the first. That's the first broad one, but like the whole thing, that's actually, that's the initial, that's the proto Delver vintage archetype grow. Um, it used, <laughs> oh, uh, what, yeah, 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 Miracle Grow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Miracle, well, Miracle Grow was. Forgotten, <laughs> Forgotten Ancient might have been the first one, yeah. yeah and then there's one. also the newer ones, um, Sun Scorch Region, which is the only dragon to have it besides Torn. Yeah, there's a ton. But... There's a ton. Yeah, I, I just assume those are the grow cards because of the deck. Yeah, grow makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, no, those those are pretty strong. And I mean, that that same thing of is anybody going to counter that one one because it's just going to end and then end the game at some point later. It's the same yeah. thing that happens with Tempo Najila is that if you can't answer her right away, she wins the game. But you don't want to answer her right away because there's other things you have to answer first. Right. But bye, Smurfs. Good luck. Oh, Smurfs. Goodbye. Um, one of one of the fun interactions I do like is I have seen somebody cast a toxic deluge against a Ishai and then miss pay because they forget that <laughs> Ishai gets the counter from right because you have to right right you, you they're like okay so it's a it's a it's an eight eight sure I'll pay eight life and he's like okay it's it's now it's a one one, one one until end of the turn. <laughs> Have fun. And then someone's like, oh, gut shot. Nope, still a one one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's the same sort of interaction that uh, I always like when, when new people are trying to get into judging. One of the fun gotcha questions is uh, my opponent has a 2 3 goif because there's a land and an artifact in the graveyard and I lightning bolt it. Does it die? No. Right? And everyone's like, oh, well, yeah, of course. No. no State based no, actions totally are fine. checked after yeah. the. Spell resolves, and the spell is in the graveyard by the time at the end of resolution. Oh, it's fantastic. I love little things like that. Yeah, yeah. that one's a fun one. If you, if you like swinging with Shivan, I'll, I'll, I'll bounce into the one big game I had. It was actually streamed with uh, Scott. Uh, I was playing Brea Divergent, and he, w- he went first, I went second, and he was on, um, he was on Gitrog. And he started off with Land, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring. I mental misstepped the Soul Ring. He then cast Mana Vault. And then he cast a um, a Graph Digger's Cage. 
And I remember that. I was watching that game. And I <laughs> was when you were playing your Brea. Yes, but playing my Brea. And and then I I uh force of negationed <laughs> the graph diggers because I I had a way to win like really close, but I couldn't win with a graph diggers out. Uh, okay. Yeah, because graph diggers just stops. Divergent transformations. Uh, you in your decks that died to incidental hate for other decks. Yes. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. I I build decks that, that lose to incidental hate in the meta, but they're good decks. They still just lose, unfortunately. There. It's it's the affinity. I, I think but. I think my favorite part of that game, Cam, <laughs> was when you start going around, going around, going around, and you you interacted with his his play multiple times in the same turn. Oh yeah. And then no one else seemed to have any interaction no. to stop anyone else from winning until one point where, you know, Scott's sitting there with one card in hand and somebody decides to wheel. Oh, that was me. That was me. <laughs> yeah, so no, I, no, I know. Yeah. And then you wheel everyone into new cards and this, nobody has interaction. <laughs> this game was the weirdest. Okay, so he went off. He kept a one lander. He only had green mana. So he ended up like going into turn three before he got black mana and could cast get rug yeah but, he had like seven mana before he could get Gitrog yeah as as it happens if you keep like 12 colorless symbols and in, in production in your opening yeah. hand yeah. At, at one point i had a isochron scepter with a vampiric tutor on it <laughs> <laughs> well okay so i was i was I was entirely out of the game, essentially, after I did all of that countering on. So it was a like, mental misstep, force of negation, pitch fluster storm. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and so I was like, all I had in my hand at that point was an ancient tomb, another land and two talismans. And so from there, the very first card I drew was vampiric tutor. And I was like, well, oh, no, no, uh, no. Uh, I drew a Gentoo stakes. And then every and then everybody <laughs> yes. said, everybody what the fuck said is that? that? Is that even a real card? Yes. It's a it's it's a it's a it's a opposite meek stone. It basically makes all of your mana dorks not untap. Oh, but because thing. Brea yes. because Brea doesn't creatures, it doesn't uh, affect Brea. Yeah, I hate yeah. that card so much. Cameron cast that against us in a pickup <laughs> game. Like, that thing is fucking awful. I'm so mad. Like half my mana was dorks. Oh yeah. 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 No, it's fantastic. It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> then... This isn't month in review. This is game in review. <laughs> Pretty much. This is great. Oh yeah. No, and, and so like it goes through all this stuff. We ended up uh there was a consult into a laboratory maniac, and we knew he had a dismiss in hand, and I cast an Angel's Grace. Okay. And so we couldn't which win. Which he, he can't, he he can't, can't win counter it. Yeah. He couldn't yeah. win. He had no more mana and he had no more card draw. We passed the turn around. And then on my turn, I Yehenny's expertise. Nice. To clear the board, and he had yeah. nice. nothing. Um, he, he 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 did scoop to it, but effectively yeah. he just he died to his draw stack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then uh, later on, eventually, I got to the point of casting divergent transformations, and we went through like three steps of rem of interaction. And the only interaction Scotty played all game long was he nature claimed one of my thopters. Which gave me a 50 50 to either hit a rune scarred demon or a world gorger. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good play. I hit gorger. And then we just That was my favorite part. I was at my eight life. Part yeah. was him having a single permanent and it be a world gorger dragon, <laughs> yes. which couldn't attack because if he attacked, he died to get frost box. <laughs> I, I was at eight life. There was a git rog in play and there was a okame adversary uh under pl oh, in place so if i swung no. at all i was just dead oh, <laughs> <laughs> so cam is just sitting here with one permanent and no help yes oh, that and yeah uh and then eventually what ended up happening was sean just uh he had a survival out and i did nothing for three turns and scott did nothing for like two and a half turns and sean just survival looped out to Finally a won. breakfast yeah. talk yeah yeah I'll yeah, do but, it. <laughs> but it was wow, that's a... hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a wild game. It was indeed. Um, yes. And so with that, we've 30 minutes in and we're through the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I am pasting part two of the intro. Yes. Let's talk about this EDH thread. So um, actually, you know what? Let's go to... 
the bigger open. screen where we can actually see things. Uh, Ooh. So usually we like to pull up interesting pieces of content. And um, if you happen to be new to playing against Hulk, this was an amazing read by um, Redshift Oz. Uh, or Redshift. I believe he's on Play EDH. I know he's on he's on the CEDH Discord. Um, but it's a, he put into words a lot of stuff that I know I'm personally looking through when we're playing through Hulk, um, which is like all of the the uh, threat assessment and how you have to figure out, oh, yes, if they have two mana, they have a chance of flash. But actually realizing if that is an instant speed flash win or if that's not and what cards to look for uh, in order to get there. So if it's shuffle or if it's the definitely not definitely not Valoros version, how you, if you see sack outlets, well, then you're probably on an instant speed win and you need to be careful with waiting for two mana. Um, or if it is, <coughs> sorry. Um, or if you can tell that it's breakfast Hulk, just things to look for to kind of identify um, how to play around Hulk. And I don't know if you, Dan, did you read through this at all? Nope, didn't even see no, it. Didn't I even see it. Right in like, <laughs> I haven't opened right in like two months. I know, I know, you're pretty busy now. Um, yeah. Uh, I am sorry, sorry for that cough. I'm actually recovering from a cold that kind of got down into a pretty bad cough. And so it's, I'm doing better. I like that. But, oh, good. Know. Yeah. Um, I don't oh, really do we want to talk about another random thing? Here's a random thing we can talk about. Sure. Our guest from last month, uh, Braden, just mm -hmm. sent me a link and said, I have a brew I worked on. Can you talk about it on stream right now? It's fucking spicy. Pod an arena rector into Jace Wielder of Mystery and Leveler and exile your deck. I'm going to post a link. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. All right. Um, so I... What am I looking at here? Okay. Well, we'll pull it up so everybody can see it. Is he finally on survival? Yeah, he is. Okay, He's good. On, because on that survival. was the very first comment I put on the Facebook post for this is, why are you not on survival? Oh, okay. He's playing oh. restricted cards. Probably because he's a goof. All right. Da, 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 da. We all play Revy. restricted cards. Mana Crypt is a restricted card. Okay, so this is like pod chaining up into Arena Rector into Leveler with... But you don't have any of the other pod pieces, which is like no, it's not. It's just about potting. Too. Well, you've got well, you have Derevi, um, that will be able to untap pod from three. I think. To four. I think the point is to just yeah. Well, I think the point is to just pod uh, pod away Timna. <laughs> Braden, I audibly groaned at the way Dan did this. <laughs> <laughs> not perfect Cameron audibly good I did it yes. perfectly there was a lull in the conversation and I just punched you right in the face you did just punch us right in the face why uh, aren't you on corridor monitor for that dank two to four action see because he has to revy and that does it too Levelers no but that cute. doesn't go from you can go from one to four with corridor monitor because one goes into corridor monitor on tap corridor uh, monitor goes into revy on tap like you okay. build actual pod chains. Le yeah. Leveler's cute, but I would way prefer to see him be playing Rest in Peace and then throw an Inverter of Truth. So he doesn't have to go to five. He just can stay at four and then nothing works because Academy Rector's at four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> Well, like, well, okay. So, so it's not he doesn't have like normal pod lines, right? But he can he can turn a dork into a better dork and turn better dork into like spell seeker. So we also <laughs> have we also have Neoform. We have Green Sun Zenith. We have Eldritch Evolution. Green we... Sun Zenith importantly does not grab either of his pod pieces. It, it... <laughs> yeah, he should turn that into a incubation druid so you can get Here... that sweet Neoform action. He doesn't have incubation druid. That's a good that's point. He really no, should. No, that's because that card sucks. You well, probably, I don't. I don't think it's actually worth playing in CDH. Having played with it to test it, that that card is terrible, even with Neoform. Mm. Neoform's awesome, but Neoform is pretty awesome. Still sucks. It does grab Vanifar, <laughs> uh, and it does grab Derevi if you need it. 
Um, yeah, grabbing Vanifar is enough for me. This is that's a creature tutor that hits I really behind. wish Vanifar having played Vanifar in standard for a while and then coming to the understanding that I did not read Vanifar and Vanifar's <laughs> sorcery speed. Vanifar I was trying is, to play yeah. Vanifar I was trying to play Vanifar with four of um Frilled Mystic to do oh. counter spells. Oh, and every time no. they'd pass something, the game would skip my priority and I'd be like, what is going on? Then I oh read it. Oh my god, you like, thought it was bugged the whole time. I, I was <laughs> trying to cheat. <laughs> not only not only did I not read the card, I had already crafted four of them and purchased the full art form of the card. Well, if it helps. Arena. Wow. <laughs> She'll probably still be tier one in Pioneer when that gets added. So Yeah. You're not wrong. Ooh, Vanifar. Four, four color Siege Rhino. <laughs> no, but like Van- Vanifar is actually like super strong in Pioneer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. That's enough of this. That is. Let's get back on track and talk about standard. <laughs> back on that's, track. I just, yeah. So so now that we're now that we're leaving our departure from being on the agenda with a, talking about a CDH brew, let's talk about the standard ban list, guys. Mm-hmm. How's that I sound? Am, I am so disappointed in Wizards of the Coast. Oh yeah, yeah, they didn't ban Oko in every other I format, need, so I can. Buy I need it. that to be out there. I I I am traditionally a red green player. Mm-hmm. Veil vale of Summer, in my eyes, as a green player, is a perfectly balanced and wonderful card. <laughs> the only problem with it is they added the words draw a card. Yep. Get rid of draw a card, and it's fine. And get, get rid, rid of draw a card, yeah. and it's not cryptic command for green. Yes. Literally, all it is is it becomes. Heroic intervention without indestructible, yeah. and it stops thoughtsies, which is yeah, totally yeah. fine. Or, I'm or a green deck; I don't want to be thoughtsies. Veil. Yeah, remove the draw card, and it's just Autumn's Veil, except you know, worse. But only slightly, art, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Veil of Summer was egregious. It was egregious. I'm happy we finally got a good Simic Planeswalker. I love my Kiora, but she's not good. No, she's no Broco. Phenomenal. She's no Broco. No. Uh, and Once Upon a Time, which I like went off about in the set review that uh, Cameron hasn't been able to edit. Maybe I should <laughs> snip that bit and just post like my rant about how much oh, I so... love Once Upon a Time. Oh, yeah, it's but amazing. Recognize the card is super fucked up. No, it's... it's a, they need yeah. to stop making... Like, I love that they keep trying to make cards free because, let's be yeah. honest, free cards are fun. It's yeah. cool yeah. to be able to just be like, boom, yeah, free ley line at the beginning of the game. But why does it, first of all, why does it dig down most of a hand? Why can it grab lands and creatures? Why does it only cost two? Why isn't it at minimum green green? Yeah. If it was green green, it would be a little better. It should probably be like two and a green, four and a green, eight and a green. I mean, Nykthos was making eight, eight walking ballistas in hardened scales on like turn three. In Pioneer, I'm sure it could at least be a three drop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just it. I so one thing of note with these bands was that there was also a philosophy document where they said that the power level that they hit in Throne of Eldraine is what they're aiming for, and they're they're aiming for like nines, and they shot a little high and hit some elevens. Um, but I wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so they hit a fifteen, they hit two elevens, and they got a bunch of nines. All right, the that's problem, good. The problem is an Oko once upon a time or Veil vale of Summer, in my opinion. The problem is all three of those are in the same color, and the counter to one of them is to play the other one. But if you're playing the other one, you should be playing the first two. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah no, so it's like the old. If you want to counter Tarmogoyf, play Scavenger Goose and Deathrite Shaman. Hey, you're playing two green cards. Why aren't you playing Tarmogoyf? Why are you playing Scoos in a Tarmogoyf deck? Yeah. <laughs> yes, very much <laughs> but so. So, so, so hold up. You said they hit the target power level of Eldraine in general intentionally. Like this, this That's was what, what they were... wanted. They wanted yeah, Eldraine they... to be a nine, but they included a few. 11, 12, 13, whatever number you want to hit. So they objectively admitted to to bringing the power level back up. So they yes. are intentionally going back up yeah. the top. They, they are intentionally going back up to the top. They don't want to dip down like they did for Amonkhet and Ixalan. And they want to keep that power level pretty much going forward. 
they they specifically i i believe okay. i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe they were wanting to actually have standard cards have a chance at impacting other formats regularly because it was a really big thing uh players did not like the fact that basically as soon as their cards left standard they were entirely worthless yeah and basically yeah. every time we take a downward dip that happens a hundred percent Every the time. issue. Well, I mean, I mean, just that. just look at Amonkhet. Yeah. Is there a single card from Amonkhet or Hour of Devastation that sees Eternal play? Like, there is one. Nazal uh, is fun, at least, right? Well, Hazaret sees Cube play. Hazaret Mind Sensor was a <laughs> reprint. I don't count reprints. Yeah, Tormenta I, 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 I mean, I mean, purely new cards. Yeah. Tormenta of Hailfire smacks and Commander. But, but last in that I, last constructed that I checked, and I, and I know I know the people I'm talking to here. Last time I checked in, EDH is not a competitive format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It so so um, in realistically, there were zero cards from Almanket and Ixalan that have really made legacy. Well, no, Ixal, Ixalan, Ixalan was a little. Excellent had like search for his camp. Oh, search for his camp. Based huh? in the chat, Hollow One. Okay. Hollow One. Yes. All right. Card so fucked modern and, and shows up in vintage. Okay, so and, we've got and it's it's unplayable now in modern. Yeah. So so we okay. have well, one card. That's, yes. One card from a year of magic compared to 2019, where we've had like multiple cards banned. Um, we've had a pretty much, I mean, a large majority oh, of the. Advanced. I mean, so we've got Teferi, we've got or three Fairy, we've got Narset, we've got Oko, um, we've well, we've got the bands. We've got Once Upon a Time, we've got Ren and Six that came out this year. Hogak. Um, Hogak. <laughs> yeah. So so they are aiming high. And I think Karn, the yeah, yeah, Karn. Oh, God, Karn. Yeah. Uh, so we definitely have a higher power level going forward which makes me really happy in that we are probably going to be seeing more cards for competitive EDH in the long run. And that that is good. But if all of them are one at the level of Oko and two at the cost of Oko, it will suck a little bit. I do think it's funny that excluding Veil of Summer, are any of the super broken cards from recent standard even remotely see EDH playable? <laughs> Oko. Oko is. Like, Oko is 100% like, Oko, playable. Oko, once upon a time is probably not good enough. It's probably fine at best. But yeah. You, because, like, you well, it's it's it. because in standard, you can play four of them, which yeah. means you're, yeah. you're more likely to hit the, the free one. Veil of Summer is good. I mean, there's there's um, Grob. Um, yep. Grob is great. What the oh, fuck is a Grob? Um, okay, Adversary. Okay, Adversary. Grob? Yeah. Yeah, he it's Green it's Bob? it's the No 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 Grob Grob is the um Yeah Grob Grob step Bob step. It's no, Grob the, is uh, um, the orc from Lord of the Rings. Uh that is in two towers that says that they yeah. need to do he's the leader of the uh the army that's assaulting I'm behind um, that. That's better than Green Bob. Tower. Yeah. yeah. Grob. Grob. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely some of them. Yeah. I do. I do wish we could see some Mystic Forge in CEDH. Uh, speaking of which, Cobble, uh, I you know, <laughs> if you haven't <laughs> read Cobble's Euroke article, he specifically goes over a lot of things you can do with Forge. It is Euroke. Oh, the the Balagad dude, Bug Monicon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the where his deck is called "Pick Up Your Lands" or "Throw Your Lands Up in the Air." Um. It is incredibly painful to play against. It is incredibly effective. And it is every little piece of like <laughs> minuscule value that you hate yourself for ever having to deal with. But then oh. you lose to like Arboreal Grazer because he he's making it so every time you cast a spell, you have to return a land to your hand. And every time you put a creature into play, you have to return two lands to your hand. And then he puts an arboreal grazer into play and puts two lands into play. And uh, yeah, it, it just Makes hurts. four mana with them. And then yeah. Another two oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Because he has a uh, Lotus, Lotus Cobra Storm. out. And yeah, I'm not an kidding. amulet of vigor. And yeah, he untaps the lands yeah, twice. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Hold on. At what point does he cast Summer Bloom and get banned in modern? <laughs> I've seen this one. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that I don't yeah. know. Um, I'm looking but, to build an Edric deck for mid-tier play. Uh, yeah. I have played against a lot of Edric decks, and the only difference between Edric CEDH and Edric like casual mid is turns. No, no, no. That's it. That there, there's no difference. <laughs> <laughs> Edric is just Edric, Edric is a CEDH deck and a mid deck at like the exact same amount. It's just yeah. Edric gets... CEDH usually plays dual lands and force of will. It just gets harder to attack with one ones. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the, 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 the thing is, is in CEDH it's really good because you have so many available attacks, mm-hmm. right? Whereas in in mid play, as soon as you start to get going, I've noticed that Edric immediate unless there's like one player at the table who's just not hitting creatures which if you're playing mid normally if somebody's having a bad draw you kind of leave them alone a little bit that's just kind of like the thing a lot of players do the edric deck can't do that (laughs) because the edric deck is like i have a 1-1 they have a 12-12 and a 4-4 yeah person who hasn't drawn a land in eight turns Mm. i've seen more players playing edric in in mid ask permission to attack like hey can i draw a card then i have like just attack <laughs> yeah yeah that's true um what i would <laughs> edric. Uh, oh man edric. Bubbest, by edric by druid's oh. repository and then by every single one mana blue and green creature with evasion and you have a functioning Edric deck. And you can just play basic plans and you're good. Pretty much. Yeah. And play play OK Adversary. I don't care if it doesn't have evasion. It's a good card. Yeah, it okay, is solid. Adversary is great. Oh yeah. Um I was I was gonna bring up that if you if you want to take another step into the mind of Cobble, he wrote another article. And lessons about... from the fringe. I love his lessons from the fringe articles. Yes. And so this is Inge or Anya and uh dealing with bag of holding and shallow grave and the fact mm. that you can essentially turn your all of your madness creatures into draw two or draw three very easily yes, yes and so your can. deck turns into like a zero card deck is what it feels like um yeah and abusing necropotence as always actually um, cobbles crazy with uh with uh is it Shadow of the Grave, the one that brings them all back? Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen somebody who was yeah. playing New Perspectives in Legacy, which is if you have seven more cards at hand, you can cycle for free. Mm-hmm. It's like a six drop from, I think, Exelon. Or no, Almond Cap. Almond Cap blocks Yeah, them, and yeah. so he, he started going, he started just, you know, slamming it down, slamming it down, because he was show and tell into that, as opposed to like Emrakul or any other show and tell target. It was yeah. show and tell new perspectives, and and he started going off, going off, and then it was just shadow of the grave, draw twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not bad for one and a black. Yeah, that's uh, that's clean. That is, I liked it. It's very I liked much. It a lot. Commander, uh, so you have here that commander is the top played format. Top. <laughs> that was a great transition. Can you talk, Dan? Nope. <laughs> Mara says Commander is the top format. Is this supposed to be news or what? Is he just re-upping on the statement from like Uh, five years ago when we were also the top format? Well, he actually posted that there is um, internal, like internal WotC data that Commander is now the most played format. Uh, Important to note that it is the most played format, but he is 100% adamant in that more players don't play a format, i.e. they're playing kitchen table. Really? Yeah. Then play formats. Like, he's convinced that more than half the Magic players in the world just don't play a format. Yeah. And that's that's the, the Watsi data that they have is saying that. And But now, is, Commander is the most played format. I would not be surprised if if Oko and, and Standard and Modern's Price and those kind of issues were pushing more and more people towards Commander. Well, they are. Given that we now know that WotC is releasing more Commander products next year than they released sets, yes. I don't know how my wallet is going to handle this. I just got oh, out yeah. of debt. I'm going to have to take out a Commander loan. I don't think the bank's going to let me. Yeah, yeah. So, so next They're year, in Canada, they they approve banks for hobbies, right? They right, can, right. They can do that, right? So, so next Hobby year bank. we have Commander decks with each set, 
we have Ikoria Commander, we have Zendikar Rising Commander, we also have the Commander Collection Green, and we have Commander Legends, which is going to be a draftable set with 70 new legendary creatures and more and we have our normal q4 commander decks that aren't tied to sets it's In, importantly as well if i ikoria has five zendikar has two so it's not like every single one is going to have a bunch of them mm-hmm. which for me is nice because it feels like as soon as i hear five pre-constructed decks it immediately to me says it's going to be a cycle of either mono colors, allied colors, enemy co- whatever it is. It's going to be color balanced. But with Zendikar Rising, it's two, and I really, really hope that. Well, I know a lot of people don't like Eldrazi. Sue me. I started with Oath of the Gate Watch. Eldrazi's my jam. I want it to be allies versus Eldrazi, or or some like good versus evil type thing because there's only two of them, mm-hmm. or or just four color sans red. But hey, it's it's another Thrasios. Just Zendikar themed. <laughs> it's, 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 they reprint they reprint Thrasios, they name him Thrasios, and just, the only difference is he has no 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 wait, he still has partner, so you can partner him with normal Thrasios, oh, no. but he has Devoid. Oh no. What? <laughs> <laughs> and if, if you if you reveal a wastes, so normal effect, but if you reveal a wastes, it puts the waste into play and draws a card. What is happening? <laughs> I'm so confused. This is going so well, and now I'm just scratching my head. What? Partners with lose the game. I'm okay if we allow a partner to read partner with lose the game. That's fine with me. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, man! So, so all of those commander products are crazy. There's a bunch of uh, a bunch of different things that are coming out that are like from the vault commanders that they're doing commander collections each color is yep. going to get one supposedly. yeah and we saw we saw yison's artwork yeah we saw yison's artwork and, and a lot of people are speculating that's not going to be yison but it's going to be cord of calling because of course he's got a cord he's the yeah bar. well actually right, he's a loot thing. he produces but cords actually it's not a loot no i'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah <loot>. yeah <laughs> yeah so pretty sure it was a loot yeah, people are pretty sure this is Court of Calling. Um, it's some sort of green summon thing. There, it, So Court of Calling isn't that much played. I mean, it could be Natural Order, but I highly doubt that. Um, Court of Calling does still see some play in Modern. And it's not but, that it's super expensive, but the foil Court of Calling mm-hmm. is way up there for Commander. Like yeah. that, it, Court of Calling for more casual players is a commander staple, the same way Green Sun Zenith is a staple in CEDH. Well, so that's right. the thing, is that this is supposed to be for commander play, and I don't see Cord that much. I, I, I haven't seen a Cord cast well, like in a really long bucks. time. Eh, that's true. I, I do see, I do see a lot of Cord in casual. Like, if, if I see a green deck that's, like, okay. green plus one color, Cord is, like, their only tutor. <laughs> Okay, court, that yeah, makes sense. Court is fairly common. All right. Um, mostly because it's the one thing casuals have that says, oh, cool, this is totally balanced. Cord into... Now, importantly, it's usually Crater Hoof. Importantly, Cord is being phased out a lot for um, um, Finale. Yeah, yeah, Finale, yeah. Which is just Cord, but better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Then we also got this... Artwork. A lot of people were saying, what was this, Bloom Tender? I yeah, kn- Oh, that's the Oracle of Moldiah speculation, I think. Yeah. So highly doubt it's Bloom Tender because Bloom Tender is 100% elf. an elf, and this is not an elf. This is a spirit of some sort. So, Well, Oracle of Moldiah is an elf, too. Exactly. They did right, so say this, that could this be was Seedborn 100%. News? They said 100% this is a character from Kamigawa that was not in Kamigawa. So, oh, so a new character. Well, so, um, or new so it's not necessarily legendary, but it's supposed to be a re- it's a reprint, yeah. but it's supposed to be depicting something that was supposed to be from Kamigawa's realm. Yeah. So that is that is on Zendikar. Okay, so a so lot of people were saying Seedborn Muse because, of course, spirit could yeah. be a spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause, well, because Seedborn Muse is Zendikar. a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely not Avenger. We've seen but way. Then... So the whole point of this was to get reprints, and we've seen way too many Avenger Zendikar reprints. Yeah, well, Avenger of Zendikar has multiple printings, multiple yeah. different artworks, which is, that's the big clincher for a lot of casual players, right? They want different foil artworks or different artworks to be able to customize. Yep. Right? 
and yeah. Avenger is is worth nothing financially, right? Yeah. You could pick up a playset of Avenger for under two dollars. Yeah, it could yeah. definitely be Craterhoof Behemoth. I like that. No, <laughs> yeah, I, no, I think, no. I think maybe not Craterhoof. No, um, but then beyond the the collection green, we had Commander Legends, and we finally got to see Baron Sengir. We got to see a, a new revamped Baron Sengir. That... I was about to say we got to see a flyable one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we don't could, know. If could, we're gonna it could get to be, see a it could be one. completely awful, and it would still be more playable than Baron Sengir Homeland. That's true. That's true. But there's a pretty good shot that this is gonna be Grixis, and so we might have a really solid Grixis vampire, which is gonna be pretty awesome. Oh God, they're that gonna push Baron Sengir. Just oh, they are. He's oh yeah, iconic. Um, and for those who are curious, regardless of if they said it was a reprint or not, we know it's a reprint as the original is reserve list. Yes. We know it's not a reprint, right? Well, we know it's a new card. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's yeah, what yeah, it's, it's a fresh design. design. Yeah, it's a freshly designed card. Um, and yeah. then we also had um, this, which was... Uh, Jessica. Jessica. Um, if you look back in Judgment, you can see her original card. Nice, very iconic weapons. Um and they said that she's a planeswalker is that right or was uh, this that she she is confirmed to be a planeswalker she that that card will be on a planeswalker frame oh yeah because so the the art that they had was extended it was it was a different frame it was well, a different not aspect that, yeah. um, mark rosewater actually confirmed it like okay. that it, she is a on a planeswalker card does that mean that cards from this set are selected out of time they're not in uh, in any sort of uh, I would I would frame. say absolute well here's the thing though both Baron Sangir and Jessica would have been alive at the same time as Baron Sangir is ancient okay. Baron um, Sangir could so it's be, at least really old and before time spiral or it is non plane based yes or oh, yeah, or it's I mean, or it's yeah, or it's, it's like yeah. a it's a ma- it's like a master set where it can be yeah. a crossover yeah. fan yeah. fiction pile of characters mm-hmm. or it's um, I would love to see, and I don't know if we will, but the one big thing is, number one, because this is Commander Legends, I'm going to go on a limb and say she, if she is a Planeswalker, and we know she is, she probably has the this can be your commander line. Yeah. I'd imagine uh, almost every single And I really, that. really hope that, because for those who don't know in the lore, she becomes, eventually, through, through the forces of magic, she becomes... Um, Corona? We're just talking about the Corona, Fage thank you. And then Corona. Fage, yeah, she, she turns into Phage and then Corona, and so do a bunch like a Chroma and a bunch of other beings so are all wrapped in there. She's one third of one quarter of a Chroma. Correct. And I believe I don't know if you can, Cam, but if you bring up the artwork for Corona, yeah, okay. I believe one of Corona's weapons is actually Jessica's Ooh. spear there. I can't that remember though. Is a fractal river i can't remember if they use that or not no doesn't look like it i do know that if you go look up all of the memorials is it the memorials yeah it, it, one of the one of the cycles of cards actually has corona in every single one of them um yeah, memorial of war has it i know there. i know memorial of war has it but there's actually a cycle of cards that um corona's shadow can be seen in all of them Oh, I, which is really interesting. I know that art, but I don't know those. Cards. I can't recall I can't recall, cards the, I can't recall the cycle. Though. Well, yeah. while they're thinking about that and hunting it down, so I have plans for this Commander Legends thing, assuming that the timing works out right, and it's not like it doesn't. The spoilers don't drop like the day of my defense. I am going to avoid social media the entire time. Actually, the day of my defense would be fine. I was about to say uh, that should be really easy. You don't yeah. go on social media anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to avoid social media, which is easy now that I've deleted all of it, um, and not see any spoilers for the entire set at any point in the spoiler period. And then on the day the full spoiler drops, I am going to live stream my first look while super drunk. Drunk And I'm going to go through and review every single legendary creature for CEDH as I see them for the first time. So, if you're interested in uh, nonsense, don't let me forget. And Love thank it. you, chat. We have decree cycle, decree of silence. Ah, uh, yes, it was the decree. So you see, decree of silence is really obvious. Oh wow! Have... Yeah, that's just correct. And then yeah. you the see her on the tree. The tree. Oh, yeah, that's you see her on the tree. Um, you can see her in the shadow of the rocks on one of them. There she is yeah. in the background. That one's obvious. That's not subtle. 
Um, there she is on the rocks. There it is on the rocks. Oh, yeah. And there it is on the rocks. And then, then she's kind of spread out on the rocks at the bottom, right, for a decree of annihilation. Neat. Yeah. I did. I remember seeing the art, but I, I didn't remember that they were on the decree specifically. I remember this one. I remember Decree of Pain. Decree of Pain was yeah. always like, that's Corona. 100%, that's yeah. Corona. Um, and I think what reminded me of this is when Jessica was spoiled, uh, people were like, yeah, no, no, she was Corona. And then somebody linked, yeah, well, if you're making a, a Corona thing, you should do this. One thing mm -hmm. I really do hope we see is that they don't, now, I, I absolutely adore the core set approach, like we said, where it's just any plane goes, there might be a bit of a story, but it's mostly just random stuff. But I do hope with this that we do get, maybe, if Jessica's sort of the face of this set, I want to see a card that depicts like her transformation, or I want to see maybe a new Corona, I want to see a new Acroma, maybe, you know, that kind of, I hope we don't get no. reprinted Acroma. We no, don't like... <laughs> to me, it'll be a failure if there's like major legendary reprints in here because they've, they've said it's going to be 70 new legendaries. Um, I do not want to see any additional stuff like make this a new set. They now importantly, they said 70 new legendaries. They did not say creature. Yes. Are we going to get new legendary sorceries? <laughs> uh, I hope they meant something. creature, planeswalker and nothing that can't be a commander. I mean, well, so we do have exactly one. We do have exactly one non-creature, non-planeswalker that can be your commander. So it could happen. What do you mean? Which one? Uh, if you go onto the Gatherer page or Scryfall mm -hmm. and look up the Grand Calculatron, oh, it has been functionally yes, eradicated. It has this may be your commander. For you. Yes, yeah. So, so we could theoretically have... I mean, so legendary lands would be cool. They have a few sets of legendary lands that they could still finish out. Would I would nice. love to see if they if they redid like Gaia's Cradle, those kind of things, mm -hmm. but not necessarily with the same effect. But I would love to see a cycle of very famous areas that matter, kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Hell, I'd love to see them actually finish the cycle. I know that they finished it, but like, let's be honest, they didn't. Well, I'd we have four good it. ones. We only need the black one. I, yeah, yeah, they can redo red and white. Hey. Too. Anything related to dragons is perfect. Uh huh. Wouldn't you <laughs> rather have one that like taps for damage mana equal to the number of dragons in your deck? And you I would be okay if it was just four. six mana tap, create Shivan Dragon. There you go. See, that's already better. Yeah. <laughs> that is. All right. That is. So, next topic up we have here is Mystery Boosters. And I am going to take a restroom break while these two discuss it because I All right. have strong feelings about this that I need to so, tone myself down for. Let's. <laughs> Good luck, Dan. Mystery Boosters, <laughs> the, the reprints that aren't really reprints, unfortunately. My, my take on them is that, well, so if you don't know Mystery Boosters, um for each slot there is an entire sheet of 121 cards that can go in that one slot and they can only go in that one slot and they have those sheets based off against um common quality and then there's three uncommon quality and there's one rare quality and then for the version that you got only at conventions they had another sheet of playtest cards which were basically jokish cards that didn't actually really get anywhere however if you do not go to a convention and you do not pay a lot extra for this booster and you buy it out at a store instead of getting those cards you have a chance of getting a guaranteed rare we don't know what's in that sheet yet um and i mean sorry not a guaranteed rare guaranteed foil guaranteed foil yeah guaranteed foil so um my take is that the way they did the rarities and the way that they did an entire sheet to a single card makes it so this is a crapshoot. There is no way you can reasonably get any card out of this. Um, there is a good chance that you could open up an entire box and not see a single second copy of a card. Like it yes. is that uncommon to see any card. And that is across all rarities. And so anything that is on their rare sheet is just impossible to see. Um, and that was one of the big things that I saw a lot of people who were like, oh my god, this is a great reprint set is somebody was like, you could open a mana crypt. And it's like, well, one out of every 121, we'll have assuming a rare and mythic have the same chance, which yeah. I don't think they do. Oh, there isn't I know there's, a rare I know there's two. Okay. I know there's two rare slots. 
like there's two slots that are only rares or mythics. Yeah, no. So each slot has its own sheet, but then they have the sheets broken up based off of their common, uncommon, or rare. So oh. they have they don't have them based off of that rarity, but they have assigned each of the cards a rarity value on these sheets. So I know Demonic Tutor is in their uncommon sheet pool. So you have a chance gotcha. of you have a possibility of getting Demonic Tutor across only one slot in that entire day on top of that. So it's uncommon, but even on top of the fact that it's uncommon, it is only has a chance of showing up in one slot. Yeah, which and means if you wanted, if you want some of the commons, you're probably going to get them. If you want some of the uncommons, good luck. And if you want any of the rares or mythics, you may as well buy singles. I mean, and it's they're entirely <laughs> reprints, but this is not reprints at a at a needed level. This is not anything like yes, they reprinted Ristic Study, but you are getting one one hundred and twenty one or like one one hundred and twentieth of a regular reprint sets number of Ristic Studies. Like well, this see, is there, there impossibly is, there is one low way. There is currently one way, because as far as I know, they have not confirmed what the MSRP, because they don't actually have MSRP. I mean, these are going to be $6 boosters at minimum. We'll see, and, and what I'm, I'm thinking is if they made these, if they kind of tried to, and I know they can't enforce it, but if they tried to have the stores, or at least put them in like Target and Walmart and those other big box places at regular standard pack pricing, enough of these might get opened if there's enough of a supply that, you know, the stars could align for this, where they print more than enough supply and they have it at standard pack pricing, where some of the needed cards, like Bloom Tender is an example, which is expensive not because it is in ten, like like inherently powerful, it is, but it is, of course, printed in a set of the Loro and Mega Block, which apparently only had seven copies ever printed, because it's, you know, $200 for foil. Yeah. And I want one for a shitty Mana Dork <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's forty dollars for a non-foil. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, just the way that they did it, they are reprints. They are not meaningful reprints. If anything, they are going to make the cards go up in value. Like right. it is going to make them cost more because it's going to drive more demand for cards, and the the supply is going to go away. It's like Why every don't... time that they've reprinted Tarmogoyf. Within three to five weeks, Tarmogoyf's price has gone up, not gone down. See, and the reason well, for that he was is normally... Card. Well, well, and the big reason for that, and you can see it with, uh, taken as an example, the Zendikar Fetchlands. The Zendikar Fetchlands were about the same price they are now before they were spoiled and printed in Modern Masters 3 or Modern Masters 2017. Modern Masters 2017 comes out, a whole host of new supply comes out, and the price goes way down. I mean, not way, way down, but like Scolding Tarm was like 50 bucks for a while. You know, it that's happened. half its current the price. price. It was way down. But the problem is, is because there's so much more supply, the demand immediately starts to shoot up, right? So now that there's so many more fetch lands, modern and legacy become slightly more affordable. The commander players want those fetch lands because, of course, I mean, fetch lands are good. It's not yeah. like it's a bad card. And then suddenly you fast forward and we're now in the same position we were, but worse because all of that supply got eaten back up, but the demand has not gone down. No, it hasn't. It, it Man evolves the same way. More people are, are interested in the format. They want to play and it drives the overall demand up and the supply is not enough to match that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's the same with almost anything. Fetch lands were one of the few, um, areas where it happened at rare in most cases being in a master set at rare tends to lower the price overall fetch lands of course are an exception because fetch lands are demanded by nearly every player in the game if yeah. you don't just play standard and pioneer you, you need want fetch lands. lands yeah yeah whereas we saw for example like you said with tarmogoyf or um with mana vault there's a great one mana vault and mana crypt were both printed at mythic rare and master sets they were reprinted as wizards would like to say, to high hell. And Mana Crypt is like 200 Canadian again. Like, it, it's way more than it was when it was just a crappy book promo. No offense to people who like crappy book promos. Mm -hmm. um, 
like, like I, I went player. to look at one. I was just like, hey, I, I'd like to pick Maybe. up a mana vault. I want one, or a mana crypt. I want one. And I went and looked at it. And for me as a Canadian, to get the version I want, which is the Kaladesh uh, in, invention. Oh, that's like 600 bucks. It's, it, it's 510 Canadian dollars. Yeah. And I was like, Oof. that's that's my monthly that's that's almost my monthly rent i know i'm sorry i'm a filthy canadian i don't pay anything for rent <laughs> but like i don't want to pay a month's worth of rent for a card especially yeah. if you know as a commander player i need like eight copies <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean even regular mana crypt from eternal masters is 188 dollars now yeah and it was just reprinted so give it a minute it's about to go back up yeah. 180 is a bit generous, though. There were copies at 120 that weren't selling at the GP. Okay. Well, I mean, was... so that's, that's TCG player right now. Yeah. yeah. Demand is much lower than the prices would indicate on Mana Crypt. Yes, and, and, and that's twofold. Number one, Mana Crypt is a card that can only realistically be played in one format. As much as Vintage is definitely a format, let's be frank, Vintage is not a format that the vast, vast, vast oh, majority no, of players will ever touch. No. Because, I mean, most of us can't put a down payment on our house, so we're not going to put a down payment on Vintage, mm -hmm. right? So it's really just Commander players who want this, but Commander players are looking at a card that costs the same as the entirety of their deck, Right. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of casual players look at a $200 commander deck and they say, that's my baseline, I'll upgrade it over time, or I'll get new cards for it eventually. But if I'm looking at the difference between buying an entire casual deck and a single mana rock, that in a casual game, non-foil, that in a casual game has a very realistic chance of killing me, because our games go on for 40 turns, Yeah, <laughs> right? It's a clear choice. You buy the whole deck. <laughs> Oh crap! That yeah, damn. Good point. I thought I was supposed to buy the mana crypt. <laughs> yeah. Oh shoot! Well, it happens to the best of us. Like, think how many shivan dragons you could buy for a single mana crypt. God, like thousands. And at thousands. least, at least three. <laughs> <laughs> you could buy that many, like, poor and black. <laughs> well, you right. definitely couldn't do beta anymore. No. Well, I was about to say alpha ones are two hundred now. So. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have our audience topics of choice. So for these, I post to the Facebook group and make a poll, and people just kind of submit questions and vote on them. The, I usually start them off with one joke answer, and it usually ends up like fifth or sixth voted. The uh, this, this I vo time. I voted for it. Yeah. It what was, was it this time? I didn't say banana. <laughs> <laughs> just punchlines out of context. Yep. So the first. And highest voted question that we are to discuss today is are top tier decks truly the only ones considered competitive? And this is an excellent question. Sky, I wanna I wanna start with your perspective on this. Purely from a CEDH perspective, as someone who watches a lot of CEDH, has played less than 10 games of CEDH, but has enjoyed it and frequently tries to watch the meta. After all, I have at least 22 different Keck emotes from different servers on Discord. They're the so best. We're in there. Um, number one, stop using the word tiers. The only tiers you should be concerned with are those of your enemies. <laughs> and number two, no. It is true, and I, I am at fault for doing this as well, that we get bogged down a lot on why would I try this when Thrasios Timna exists? Or why would I try literally any five-color commander when you don't need red? Um, but, but, like, <laughs> you, you, you get it, right? And, and so, no, I think what's important is that a lot of people will go out and immediately say, this is not viable, before there's even data for it, right? And if, and I'm going to be frank here, if we're so bad that Red and Six was like five dollars on release and Oko was ten, then we should not be evaluating an entire deck without pod data. <laughs> we yeah. shouldn't be just looking at a deck and being like, "No, this plays a bad card. This it is bad." Yeah. Now, I would love if people would go out, play their pods, and get data for them, and then be like, "Hey, this I played a hundred games over the course of six months." This is what happened. Turns out this deck has an 80% win rate because Crater Hoof Behemoth is a good card. 
right? Something like that. But unfortunately, number one, CEDH is one of the smallest formats in the game. I know format is not the correct. It, it's one of the smallest play style. metas, play or styles, meta, yeah. in, in the world. Um, like, Kamigawa Block Popper Tiny Leaders probably has about the same number of players, depending on the summer. Um, and, yeah. which means, you know, if only 1% of players go out and try to collect that data, we get to the position where there are so few CEDH players. It's the same reason that you know, people have asked, why is it that I always see the same three names on every single deck brew and two of them are Shaper? Well, as it turns out, because there are so few people playing CEDH and most of them are players, right? We don't have a whole lot of people branching out and doing that kind of brewing. And so, no, I, I don't believe that only the the 10 or so, however you many want to call it, I don't know how many Tim Thrasios decks exist right now, <laughs> right? But I it doesn't matter that they are the current best. There is 100% a deck that is currently not being played that is better than that deck. But because we have so many few people who are going out brewing, playing different pods and doing these things, it is possible we'll never find it. It's the same thing that happened with Death Shadow and Mod. That deck was legal and it's 100% normal thing. Same with, um, uh, with um, the Bridge deck when it came out. Mm-hmm. All of those cards were legal for years in modern, but nobody played them because nobody had connected the pieces. And, and whereas modern has... they wouldn't have been good at other times too, because the meta no. they preyed on existed at multiple times. It was yeah, just exactly. Yeah. Them. It, it's it's a situation where modern has and I think I'm comfortable saying millions of players, whether mm-hmm. they're competitive GP Pro Tour fighters or whether they're they're your local modern F and M players. There are millions of modern players, and those kind of decks do happen. I mean, you know, it, it's it's a thing where not everybody can look at a card and immediately go, holy crap, this is super broken. And most players will look at a card and go, this is unplayable. And then, you know, it's a $200 foil and a $300 foil, $400 foil, and it's banned in Legacy. Because it turns out regrowing a wasteland is good. Um... <laughs> Yeah. So I I would firmly say that like the correct answer to that is no, but the better answer is yes until people start to not only allow that branching out, but also are more inviting of those potentially worse decks into pods for the purposes of seeing if it can hold up. That's one issue that I think may come up with a lot of playgroups and especially online playgroups where you'll see three you know, tried and tested good decks. And one player will be like, hey, I'd really like to try this infinite turns Baral deck. And everybody's going to be like, can you bring a CDH deck, please? We don't want a waste of our time. So, yes, 100%. 100% agree on that. That was a great Sorry, answer. Sorry, do I talk too much? No, <laughs> no, you you wrapped that up very well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't have anything to add. <laughs> uh, well, I will say that I personally get away with uh, playing really trash decks at times. Um, yeah. Get away is generous. We make fun of you all the time. Oh, you make fun of me all the time, but you still play the game. Sure. Uh, yeah. And you'll still lose to stupid stuff. Well, let's, let's, be, let's be honest. Lose is generous. Hey, I've seen Dan mold a four in a CDH game and then win on the back of a single fairy macabre, right? Yeah. I didn't win that game. No, I he didn't win. No, he didn't. You, won you stopped one, Stevie right? from winning. In my yeah. eye, that's a win. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I won I won the moral victory. Yeah, everyone remembers me from that game. Mm. <laughs> Not whoever did win. Yeah. Um, no, but... Uh, it, it it's more of a mindset for what's competitive versus what is not like i mean so i made bruce charles wild ride or jeskai ascendancy um i've played my brea deck and it is it is entirely destroyed by the meta it is a good deck same with anala it is entirely destroyed by graph diggers there's a lot of value that you can find in interactions that some people really don't see or they don't want to play or they don't want to chest it i mean so we wouldn't have cobbles your deck if he wasn't playing with tatiova for forever and your is basically a better tatiova with black and now we have that sort of a deck and there's some there's some people who see existing 
existing decks and they're like, hey, I see food chain sliver. Or I see uh, first sliver. That's obviously a better food chain deck. Let's just make food chain and then let's take out all the cards that we really don't want to play because they're just worse. And then we will play food chain sliver. And it's just the the most resilient food chain deck that there is right now. Um, but that's not really going out on a limb and finding new or interesting tech. That's just putting a deck together and crafting it to a specific meta. So there's there's kind of two sides of brewing. There is making a deck very good for the meta that it's playing in for tuning, and then there's creating it from the ground up. And creating them from the ground up, it can be really hard when it's something that people haven't seen before. And if it's somebody who ha- is known for doing that or known for playing different decks, it's a little easier to get away with it. Um, but it very much so there are people that are like, you know what? I really, are you going to be interacting? You are. Okay. Yeah, you can play. Um, but then at the same time, there are the people It sometimes that deck is really just six I'll mana keyword soup yeah. creatures that doesn't do anything until they cast a few of those and then wins because everybody else is stopping everybody else from doing anything. Um, so cobble sliver deck. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> but and, and and that's that's one of the things is it's it's that sort of new brewing right if you want to call it that 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 branching out and finding new ideas is something that i i've tried to brew cdh dan can attest to the amount of really bad decks that i've been like hey is this viable it only requires 18 cards and no one to interact <laughs> right, it, I do remember Sig. I almost won that game if I had have had three more hours. Yeah. Um. But <laughs> and see, that's the thing is is more people need to to kind of not just branch out. I know that a lot of CEDH players do branch out. They they try to brew their decks, but then they get bogged down with either the difficulty of it or maybe they send it to somebody who they may respect as a brewer who shuts it down and. I feel like a lot of those players might be kind of becoming defeatist on themselves before they even try to kind of push it out further. Yeah. And I think if we see more of that, yes, we are going to have more non-games where one of the players is just playing five-color dragons, bad stuff. But we might also eventually find the new Thrasios Timna. Like, imagine a meta where Thrasios and Timna aren't playable because they're just not good enough. Hey, Let's get CEDH to that, that point. Like... For other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody's on mid range grind fest, Thrasios and Timna actually can be entirely unplayable playable, which is pretty and crazy. Eventually we're gonna get to the point where the players shifted off them. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna eventually get to a point where everyone is so grind fest that a glass cannon deck suddenly just is yeah. undefeatable because they took out all the interaction because there's no point in interacting with your opponents when they're already interacting with each other. Right? You're just sitting there with like turn one uncounterable veil of summer. I win. Yeah, I mean that that is kind of like the uh, was it uh, lightning druid that was just everything that was total like every possible way of getting a turn one hasted uh, hermit druid possible. <coughs> um, <laughs> Dan Luke wants you to text him. Well, yeah, I'm here. just looking at this. this absolutely <laughs> like, you gorgeous. don't have to text him. One of you could just say hi, Luke. I know, I know, hi, but, Luke. But, like, look at this awful quality picture. It's a like storybook frame Mystic Remora that Luke oh, just sent me a picture of. I see a glare gorgeous. and the reflection of your camera. Yeah, right, you well, couldn't that, see anything. Yeah, I can't do much about that. Can I have that, Luke? Please, thanks. Yeah, yeah uh, or 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 maybe just have Luke stick right. that in the chat. All right, let's let's. Uh, I, I think we have definitely answered that top tier decks are not the only things that are only truly competitive. Um, I would add that there is another type of competitive that you can have a lot of fun with, with which is budget competitive, and you can do budget CEDH at a price point and have a lot of fun with it, and you can engage a lot more people in that uh, than if you do it unbudgeted for newer players. Um, now, Cam, let's be honest. Budgeted CDH is just CEDH without dual lands and without mana crypt. <laughs> yes, however, yeah, I it a hundred dollars. Not $100 so. So there's like a there's there's some there's some steps. Two fifty, five hundred and seven fifty, 
at 750, you have like 96% of a CEDH deck. You don't have duels. You don't necessarily have all the fetches and you don't have like twister, but you have a lot of cards that you can pretty yeah. much put into a deck and have. Well, that's some, time. that's one of the count? big things about that's it. That's definitely not 4% of the cards in your deck. That's like <laughs> 30% of the cards in your deck. Well, well, and one of the cool things about CEDH is, is if, again, if you Sorry. take out the good cards that are lands, like the fast <laughs> duels, you take out Time Twister and you take out some of the fast mana. Most of CDH is pretty inexpensive aside from that. Yeah. Right? Like, yes, Bloom Tender is expensive, but not every deck plays it, right? Some mm -hmm. of the tutors, like Demonic Tutors, 20 bucks, maybe? Uh -huh. 20. Something like that. 20. Like, just don't. Yep. And, and Idelic Tutors, unplayable. Three mana. Isn't it's that cool. 30 bucks? It is way more than that. Lorwyn Mega Block is the worst best thing that's ever existed. Oh yeah, yeah. no, Idyllic Tutor stupid, stupid expensive. Um, Don't look at the foil. Uh, so I, if if people weren't watching our stream, uh, I did a, um, I did a decluttering stream, uh, and it was, I, nice to watch. it was it was pretty fun. Uh, it actually was pretty. Now I just have like. I have like 3,000 cards I need to go through and figure out if they're bulk or if they're actually sellable. Um, but I... I love the concept of after two major decluttering streams, you still have 3,000 cards just that you need to sort. Yeah, yes. I don't know how he managed that. I spent like two hours and trucked my entire collection. Well, I mean, okay, so so I was, I was casually trying to say, here are... CEDH staples and I was literally only pulling colorless like Karn or or uh crucibles or like lightning greaves out and I I started pulling lightning greaves out late and I was like here's 11 lightning greaves here's like two five bucks yeah here's two swords of feast and famine and here's a foil sword of feast and famine here's two swords of fire and ice and here's a foil sword of fire and ice um <laughs> here are Three rings of bright hearth, and here's a Portuguese for rings of bright hearth. Here are uh, well, here's a Garafa rig. So who really? I have I have that same problem, but it here's Tron. You know, lots and I, lots of Tron. Um, right, I don't like like I was really excited a couple days ago. I have now six fetch lands. Yeah. For me, as a commander player, the only time I've ever owned fetch lands was I owned one because it was the second card, the rare, second rare I ever pulled in standard. I looked at it and said, this loses me a life. This is a bad card, and threw it in a box. Mm -hmm. I then put it in my trade binder because someone told me that I should. And then when I played Modern, but then when I sold out to Modern, I didn't have any fetch lands anymore. So now having them is cool to me. But I have the same problem that you have, Cam, where I was going through my cards to see if I wanted to sell. And for the most part, I try not to sell cards from pre-cons. Mm -hmm. I try to keep my pre-cons, like Atraxa is an exception. Atraxa is $40. I don't want to play her right now. I'll sell it, right? But I, I, at this exact moment, I have a pile of 42 Cultivates. None of them are foil, and they are all from Precons. I have a collection of 87 Soul Rings. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I have too many Soul Rings. Like, I, I, I have way too I many. I'm there with you. 87? 87 Soul Rings. I don't know where they came from. I only have one that's altered, and only because I decided to try altering it one day, got halfway through putting, like, the, the grayscale and then the black paint to paint over, and got bored. So it's it's half altered, and it's in that box. 87? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't... It, Dan, it, I don't play Soul Rings, so none of them are even in a deck. No, but, but like, there's not even been 50 pre-cons. That means uh -huh. that not only did you buy every precon, you then like acquired so, double that many extra soul rings. So this is actually? this is how this this is how this goes. I own one of every precon that I have purchased myself, with the exception of the ones in the anthologies, because I did buy both anthologies as well. Well, no, I bought huh. one and I, I I won one in a giveaway. Huh. Um, I technically bought it the same day, but then when I won it in the giveaway at the store, I was like, hey, can I refund the other one? <laughs> and then what ended up happening is there was a store near me who was going out of business. And they had a bunch of precons. They had multiple of every, like, a bunch of precons. And I'm not talking, like, eight Calia precons. I'm talking, like, 12 Marath precons. 
right? Like <laughs> a bunch of precons that pe- that were there because people didn't, didn't buy them. them. Yeah, yeah, right. They're precons that were not worth the price of the precon at yeah. MSRP. Yeah, and so uh, I went up to the store and they were doing all the stuff, and I noticed they had literal like cardboard, like three by three by three boxes full of pre-constructed decks, dual decks, just pre-constructed magic stuff. And I said, what are you doing with that? And they said, I bought it. It is now at a loss. I'm closing the store. I'm retiring. If you give me $20 now cash, it is yours. Wow. So I took so you two boxes, stacked. two, oh two cardboard goodness. boxes of three by three by three pre-cons. I have 19 copies of dual deck Kiora versus Elspeth. Don't know what to do with that. Um, <laughs> If anybody needs an Elspeth, let me know. <laughs> um, I got, when I was going through, and I've, I haven't opened them all, but I did open some of them because at different times in my life, they've been packed away, like, because yeah. I've moved around, they've yeah. been packed. So I'd end up being like, I'd like to play a precon against friends. I don't know where my open Marash just... precon is. I'll open a new <laughs> one. <laughs> so I have, no joke, I have 19... Marath, the card in a box, <laughs> and all of them are from precons that I own somewhere yeah. in my wow. Um, that's crazy. And so, and so, and that's and those soul rings don't encompass all of them because there are sealed precons and and other sealed content just in a box. Oh my god, Jeez, um, that's... and yeah, at the end of the day, I could sell them, but what I've normally been doing is every time I'll go to a pre release or something like that. Um, there's usually, because the pre-releases I go to usually have about 80 people at them, and they encompass everybody from, like, competitive level, like, legacy modern players, to, like, kids where this is their first time playing Magic. Mm -hmm. And so, at the end of those events, or after, you know, we hit the milkshake bracket, where I went 03 drop milkshake bracket, because that's the best bracket, um, we'll start playing Commander. And usually what ends up happening is one or two kids will walk over, watch us play, and they'll play Magic, but they don't know what we're doing, and so the last to watch, blah, blah, blah. And eventually, their parents will come over because, of course, their kid's just sitting here doing nothing. And every single time that happens, I'll usually ask the parent, hey, do you mind if I give them a deck? And the parents are usually like, yeah, that's fine. So I'll literally just, I have a, a I can't remember what the brand is, it's like Pirate something. It's a, it's a pre-built backpack that's made to carry magic cards and magic mm. decks. Oh, that's good. It's got like a modular inside. Yeah, with like yeah, yeah. 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 And I'll, I'll pull out of it, and it'll just be, like, four precons in there, and I'm like, pick one that looks neat. Pirate Labs, thank you, Splitmos. And I'll just be like, here, to pick one, and they'll be like, ooh, I want this one, it has a fancy bird on it, and I'm like, yes, one less to Revy. <laughs> uh, I know who you are, Luke, I read it quickly, I was <laughs> This is why you weren't invited, and I was. Ooh, ooh um, shots fired. So, so I've been doing that, and so in the, in, in the two years since that happened, I have now given away 33 precons to people, and I still have over a box of precons. Wow. Oh my and goodness. And it's becoming a problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you saw what I did. I ended up, I, similar to how you were giving stuff away, I also gave away a few things in the stream. Um, uh, a lot of these... You, you, cut I, out, you cut out there, Cam. I don't know if you cut out on stream, but oh. you cut out there from me. Um, so I, I gave away a bunch of stuff on the stream as well. Um, yeah, I won one of them. Yes. Hey, did you give away an abyss? Uh, Lee abyss, oh yeah. It was an Italian abyss. Yeah, still. Just like a normal abyss, but it has pepperoni. But still, like, it, just give it away an abyss because you had a spare one that you got for like 20 bucks. Yes. Dan, you should watch that decluttering stream. My wallet weeped. Yes. Oh, <laughs> you have no clue. Like well, I did he's not going really. When he just pulls out like a beta dual land, he's like, "Oh yeah, that should probably be sleeved." Yeah, didn't you pull out? Didn't you find like an old casual deck of yours that was running like it was running? Uh, it was like oh Grixis, y- yeah, Grixis. Uh, uh, sword yeah, Grixis like Thopter Sword beta with du- with beta <laughs> duels and fetch lands and yeah. Yeah, no, it was full of dual lands and it's just like a casual thing. I meanwhile I go here and I'm like <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go look through my old casual decks to try and sell stuff and I open mine. And I'm feeling super happy because it had a foil thrumming stone, which is a hundred dollars now. Wow. And Kale's over here opening up Grixis the Opter Sword. He's just like, oh yeah, twelve dual lands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So there's there's there a reason, definitely there's a lot of joy so in giving expensive. away, and and it's not the reserve list. It's because Cam owns them all. Uh, but, 
No, I, yes, I, so I gave second, away our second this, but question. Yes. Let's move on. Yeah. Choice. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, we had yeah, questions. When, when declare the next right. two of these in yeah. six minutes. Uh, usage of secret tech in a list versus the optimized list. So basically, uh, how do you tech versus a meta? So every single deck has flex slots. Um, if you don't know what they are, ask the person who made the deck. There's going to probably be anywhere between two and six cards that are entirely meta dependent that can be pulled out and new cards can be put in that are better for your meta. Um, in some metas, a single piece of stacks can just destroy them and it doesn't touch you at all. Uh, there are spots in every single deck for those, 100%. Do not do the first bit Cameron said. Don't ask the person who made the deck. Think read the primer it. first. Well, think about it. Yes. Read, if read you can't bill, find it. Yeah. Use your big brain. Step you you one. have the power to create thoughts that recognize what cards suck for you. I know you can do this. You can yes. hear me. So you can Step pass. one. If you go oh, on the pass. CEDH database and you click the link and that link doesn't have a well-written primer, complain. If then you go on can Reddit. construct a CEDH deck, <laughs> you clearly know how to speak and spell, you can write a goddamn primer. If I have to write them for my shitty mid-decks, you have to write them for CEDH. Step two, <laughs> play the deck. And one of the really good ways to learn your flex slots I've found, because I've done this in the few games I've played of CEDH, i found flex slots, is playing in, in a meta where you're playing against the same sort of people repeatedly, and anytime I have a card in my hand where I'm looking at it and going, this is not going to help me here. Or this could, I know a card that this could be which would do its job better. Yeah. I usually have like a notepad or something. And that's the same thing I did in Modern. I'd write down those cards and be like, this is, I, I need to change this for Graph Digger's Cage, which you should probably be playing because turns out yeah. Graph Digger's Cage is a fair amount of magic card. Yeah. Uh, so the, the kind of way you can start doing that is be like, Every time you have a card that you say, this is doing nothing for me in my hand, think about a card that could go in that slot and see and try to think what what interaction that could have done. Could it have been a better mana dork? Could it have been a piece of card draw? Could it have been a magic mirror? Yeah. Could I mean, it have been Juntu? Yeah. What's the, oh yeah, the Gentle. dork tap thing. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of times that you can think about that, and you've got usually you have a lot of time in a turn where you're not paying a ton of attention, and you can look at the dead cards in your hand. So yes, yeah. that is how you do that. Let's move on. If Timno if Timno were banned, do you think Thrasios will still see as much play in the command zone, and vice versa? Who is the bigger problem, Kai? What do you think? Uh, if Timno were banned, yes, Thrasios would still see play. Thrasios is much better than Timno. As we've seen with decks like Thrasios, Vile Smasher is yep. that the other two colors? Yeah. yeah, it's it's Thrasios plus anyone who gives black. The reason Timna sees more play than Vile Smasher is not because white is better than red inherently. It's because Timna is an engine when it comes to drawing cards by herself. She yeah. can basically just say she's a Bob. Well, she's a, a Phyrexian Arena is what she is. So so Timna is an amazing engine. Thrasios is an easy combo piece. So if Timna goes away, Thrasios still exists as an incredibly easy combo piece. And he can pair, he gives you amazing color options and throwing Vile Smasher on him gets you all the right colors to do pretty much everything that Timna does. Now, those decks do not have the same easy availability to card draw that Timna gives. And so they have to go through additional routes to get that. Now, decks like Timna and Krom that are being pointed out in chat, um, those work because Timna is an engine. And also, Chrome is an engine. They don't have the instant combo capabilities that Thrasios does. They don't have a lot of the two-card combos that Thrasios can do, but they still work because they're engines. Tim doesn't and, and they're, they're, they're built in a much different way, too, yeah. right? Like, a Thrasios deck is built to abuse the fact that at any time, if you have infinite mana, you've won the game. That's yeah. kind of Thrasios' thing. Thrasios just says, have infinite mana, win game. Right, whereas a Tim Necrom deck is have enough turns win game because it relies on, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better way, putting in effort. Right, you need to use your combat steps. You need your opponents to mm -hmm. exist. Which I mean, I mean, it's pretty easy to have your opponents exist. But no, from from a from a point, my point of view, Timna is a much better card in more circumstance because Timna can com can pair with other partners to win in a variety of ways, whereas a Thrasios deck 
is almost always built to abuse the fact that Thrasios is just your win condition, right? Mm-hmm. Timna, Timna, the reason they're paired together is because, again, you get four of, well, the three best colors in CEDH and another color. Just so happens that that other color is giving you a really powerful draw. I'm going to disagree with all that because I think the engines are more valuable now. That's why I've dropped Thrasios and I'm playing Tim to Crown and I'm on just like mono card advantage. I am stick. I have two engines in the command zone and like 10, 15 plus card advantage engines. And I will aggressively tutor for those over anything. So what and- happens when the meta shifts into such a more grindy mid range meta? That Timna stops being an engine because that's, the board is so flooded. That, that's, that's, that's what Crom's for. The meta I play in, and that's Timna's what planeswalkers are for. Commanders, yeah, that's why I'm playing like. Eight, so, eight so will we will we get to a point where Timna is replaced with another partner to side with Crom because the colors matter more than Timna's inability to draw? I actually thought about it, and the the color from so the black white from Timna makes her better for colors as well as for for actual being timna she's okay. still she's so, still so you'd rather have you'd rather have that than you'd rather have um black green as an example yeah yeah because i i thought about it i looked at what it would look like with those and i'd rather have 1.6 1.7 card advantage engines in the command zone and those colors and it's been far more dominant for me than thrasios was because things have slowed down enough that thrasios being a combo piece is irrelevant because mm-hmm. he was always just a bad card advantage engine like for for five months for me because yeah. the meta got so grindy so i at this point i there were definitely arguments to be made like your your argument i think is really sound based on what at least again i can only speak to the metas i experience um thrasios was definitely an issue for all those reasons before it became like a consult takeover and everything became yeah. a grind fest. We'll see. And, and I haven't played CEDH yeah, in, yeah, exactly. in consult. When I played CEDH, I was playing um, Captain Sisse. And like yeah. everyone was like, this was like, Thrasios was less than three months old when I started playing CEDH. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, like you're not even, you're not even that out of date in terms of the information it's just been a really aggressive shift very recently that mm-hmm. that pushed thrasios down in relevance i guess in in my opinion so it's not that i think you're wrong i just think that uh you're a few weeks too late on the stream <laughs> timing for us i'm, because... I'm correct <laughs> if you had have invited me to a previous month in yeah, well, yeah no, no, no. it's month in review yeah. hold on let's just go back that full month <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like two or three, but but yeah, like I so at this point, I think the engine matters more. If we get to a point where we speed back up some, then I do think we get to a point where Thrasios matters more, and I think that's if we get to a stacks meta again. Yeah, I would rather have the Thrasios than the Crown in a lot of situations, but not all of them. But right now, I think uh, technically to answer the question, Tim is the bigger problem, but I don't think either mm-hmm. one's ban worthy. Uh, right. All right any point there we go so uh do we want to skip mulligans of the day since we're already past uh we can do it pretty quick we can do it really quick all right let's do one mulligan one mulligan uh it's already been done we are on let me let me move over to the bigger screen so it's easier to see we are on food chain sliver um we are going second the pot is shovel hulk food chain sliver nujilo tempo and consult cast in that order our first opener Mana Vault, Savannah, Veil of Summer, Brainstorm, Mana Crypt, Finhorn Elves, and a Time Twister. Uh, this is a keep. Uh, actually, well, see, so I was immediately going to say Snap Keep, but then Time we Twister don't have blue. and Brainstorm are uncastable, and yeah, we also no. don't have a way to get blue. Effectively, yeah. our hand right now as it sits is we play Savannah, and we either play both of our Mana Rocks out and or Finhorn Elves, and we, then we're hoping our top three has something. You you play Savannah Fintorno Elf, and then the next turn you would Mana Crypt Vault and hope you drew a blue source. A blue source for Twister. 
Yeah. And you'd also okay. you'd also have Veil backup in case somebody decided to want to counter that. I think this hand is terrible. <laughs> All right. So not, not having access yeah, not blue having blue makes this really hard. I if, think if we... that Savannah was a tropical, this is a snap keep. All right, let's let's mulligan. See what we get. Yep, and we need to get that last card. Come here, stream, catch up. So I delay can see. Sylvan Library, Bloodstained Mire, Underground Tomb. Sorry, Underground Sea, Savannah. Underground Tomb. Time Twister and a Silence. I don't like this. It has this Sylvan Library, but slow. it has no acceleration. It has delay, but that's a two mana counter spell. That's not really a counter spell. I I I can't keep this. No, with with in my opinion, with what the pod is. No. We're basically saying we're doing nothing for two to three turns. I don't think we said the pod. Shuffle Hulk, yeah. us, Najila, Cass. Yeah, 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 we did. All right, I let's I definitely say I, we're, I, we're I'd, going I'd to, to six. six. We're going to six. Yeah, the hand's kind of booty. I'd right. rather the first hand than this hand, and I don't want the first hand. Preordain, Tropical Island, uh, Atlanta, that is, where that else? Too many there. Um... Uh, no, because we're London Mulliganing. Oh, London Mulligan. So That's a... let's read this. Preordain, <laughs> Tropical Island, Llanowar Wastes, Laboratory Maniac, Dispel, Windswept Teeth, Underground Sea. We are, if we keep this, we're putting one to the bottom. If we keep this, we're probably putting Island to the bottom? Uh, or, putting... sorry, uh, one of the two islands, or Llanowar Wastes. Yeah. I think I'm tossing back Lab Maniac. Because this yeah. is going to be a really... I don't, I don't know if this pod is going to be as aggressive as... We might be thinking. I, I mean, I was I was going to keep the lab man to block at Tim. No. <laughs> well, I mean, no. So the thing is, is in in first lover, you do just have the option of casting lab maniac and getting the consult off, and just putting a lab maniac in play. It's not the best, but it is an option. Um, but I, I guess the question is, I guess the question is, is is this better than a Pursuit 5 with the fact that you really have one piece of interaction and preordain and effectively nothing else? I am... So what I would be looking at is... So if we put Lab Maniac on the bottom, we can turn one trop island, or Tropical Island into preordain. Um, we get to scry away. So that'll dig us at most three cards deep. We have a fetch land if we need it. This, I think this, this is, is keep. This is slow, but I think you can keep it being that we have both a tempo and a console deck. Yeah, I think that's keepable. Ha ha ha! Dan's right. This is, we can keep I, this. I, I, I like I like this a lot more than the hand one, and the hand two was just terrible. Yeah, hand two was terrible. All right, that was Mulligan of the day. Let's move on. Upcoming events. We have a Time Twisted CEDH tournament. Um, Metal Legs is the one um, pushing that on. I, Kai, you are going to be judging that. This is a uh, online webcam game uh, played. It's going to be streamed. Uh, I know I will be commenting at least for a portion of it. I don't know if I'll be able to do all of it. Uh, it's, I believe it's the first or second weekend in December. It's going to be Saturday and Sunday. Uh, there's a twenty dollar entry fee on it, and I believe we got some dual. There's, there's dual there's... lands as prizes. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, there's a, a couple fetch lands in there too. Oh yeah. yeah, no, we have from uh, what I've seen from both of both the tournaments so far. Because I, I judged last one, and then this is the third one now, which I'll be judging. Mm -hmm. The the prizes are great. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty solid tournament. Um, it looks solid. Uh, then we got Thanksgiving coming up. Everybody in the U.S. Happy Turkey Day. Everybody in Canada, you already had yours. I was about to say, uh, Sky is when you say month in review, you mean month, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, well, actually, I, I did a uh, Canadian-U.S. Uh, midpoint Thanksgiving like two weekends ago where it was in between the Thanksgiving uh, for Canada and the Thanksgiving for the U.S. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. That is upcoming events. I don't think we have anything else, Dan or Kai, nothing else really big. Uh no, I'm no, right. I'm definitely taking I a break. Think we're good. All right. Events. Then let's move on to something to think about. Uh after we've just spent an hour and 50 minutes talking about magic, what non-magic thing do you like right now, Kai? Um well, I'm a bit late to the party, 
but as I sold a bunch of magic things, I decided to buy the new Pokemon. I got Pokemon Shield. And unlike most Pokemon players who I've noticed in a few communities, including the Lab Maniac Discord, are already to the point where they're looking at competitive and, and they're, they're, they're pushing their Pokedex to the end, I have yet to leave Route 2. <laughs> um, I am five. I am. I am five hours. I am five hours into the game. I have yet to speak to the Pokemon professor to get my Pokedex, like to get whatever you oh. talk to them about. Um, however, I have almost fully evolved my starter Pokemon. Okay. Um, I I've decided to convert this. Normally, I'll I'll stick around till I have most of the Pokemon in the first couple routes and then continue on. I've decided to turn this into a Professor Oaks challenge. Which, for those that don't know, you have to. Have every Pokemon, including evolutions, in your Pokedex that is available before a gym, before you complete the gym. So I will be here until a minimum of level 42 on one of the Pokemon, training off of level 3 Wooloo. <laughs> Ooh, um, they don't give you much. But they? thankfully, this game has, for me anyway, I know some people don't like it, thankfully this game for me has experience share built in, so my yes. team levels up much quicker. And uh, I have, I've, I've heard a lot of people have already started finding shiny Pokemon, and there's a super shiny Pokemon now, which is interesting. So normally a shiny Pokemon is one in, originally it was one in 8,000 something, now it's one in 4,000. However, if your, user, if, your, if your user ID has a specific set of numbers, you'll get, instead of a star next to the shiny, you'll get a square. Yeah, so you'll now be able to get the, the super ultra mega rare shinies. So keep an eye out for my, in about two months when I have a full six slotted competitive team for OU with all square shiny types. We'll be ready Love to go. Love it. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> Beautiful. I have not played Pokemon in a while. I just haven't had the time, but I was sorely tempted with Sword and Shield. I just, I... I don't have time for anything right now outside of school, so I'm having to finish all that. And I know even Halo's coming up here soon on PC. And I oh can't... crap! I so yes, it like is. you have no clue how excited I am about that. But I don't think I'm going to actually be able to get it right away. And I don't. I don't know that. if I can play Pokemon while playing Magic and Halo literally oh, at the same time. My yeah. my pod might complain. No, no. You see, you have to use your toes. Get get so that you can use your toes to play Pokemon, and you'll be good. I can already do that. Okay. I was going to say, you could probably grind that. How do you, how do you, how do you think I'm getting like 200 catch combo and Caterpies while, while I'm doing things? Like, no. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Toe synergy is right there. <laughs> now I have to start to figure out how to use my tongue to play Halo and then we're good. <laughs> nice. Ah, oh, um, Dan, would you like to, uh, yeah, sure. So I was putzing around in Subnautica, which I have. Uh, it's a great game. Sequel's coming out soon. Subnautica, Sub Zero or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably stream that eventually when I get it. Uh, but in Subnautica, there are massive, massive pop in issues. Uh, the game is fantastic, but the people that made it did not have the capability or necessarily even the knowledge to properly optimize a game yet. Mm -hmm. because they're like a 20 person studio now after they've released it yeah so uh collision textures collisions are tied to textures and textures can deload depending on <laughs> on speed so for starters you can just fall out of the world and so i was there's a there's a how do i talk about this without spoiling much there's a really uh uh, deep under the sea like dungeon that you can explore for lack of a better word mm -hmm. and it's like as far down as you can get so i decided to try and race my way from the top of my life pod that you like crash land in all the way down to the bottom in uh this like exoskeleton gear that you can use so i have been slowly learning to move quickly in that thing and I blitzkrieged my way down there. I made it like 1,700 meters under the ocean in under 10 minutes. Uh, you are, like you are definitely you are definitely dead as soon as you try to surface again. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know all about the bands. This game totally ignores them. Yeah. But I moved fast enough that I deloaded probably a good 15 to 30% of my, my spelunking 
and in fact i deloaded the entire dungeon but <laughs> I, so i cruised into it and recognized a couple of spots in there so i then started like firing my rocket thrusters to try and stall in the air to let the textures load so i could land somewhere because otherwise you just fall through the world so i eventually loaded in because it caught up with me coming all the way down and popped in and was like all right so now i'm gonna go to the place where i had meant to go in the dungeon and when I reloaded the dungeon, it reloaded in like the original state. So all of the keys basically that I'd used to open doors, all that had had gone back to locked, and I hadn't <laughs> brought keys on me. <laughs> I it. So I locked myself into the dungeon. So so, I, so I, you've successfully managed to not only find Davy Jones' locker, but forget the combination. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the weird part is i clicked out and exited the file because like i'd locked myself in a dungeon what am i going to do with the rest of that file i want to putz around more so i reloaded later and i was in the same spot like i had i had saved which was on top of the life pod headed back to my base and for some reason went to another like quest type location and it had refreshed some some soul like one-time pickup items that are that are like plot delivery information which I'm now wondering if it means that by deloading and reloading a plot area, I deloaded and reloaded all plot areas <laughs> because they may have tied these things together. Because I know for sure I picked oh. up these plot location objects and they they were there again when I went back. And that's never happened to me before. So Dan, I know I know some people like New Game Plus, but I think you're going over. <laughs> <laughs> apparently yeah oh man so that was fun nice um cameron what do you got i have been reading a really oh, hilarious so story called the all guardsman party and um if you are not familiar with it essentially it is the story from a players from the player's perspective while they're playing warhammer 40k D, D or warhammer 4k role playing and they have like the craziest dm where their initial character creation is they're making a ton of guardsmen and then they're like defending against an endless wave of orcs and their entire party dies and the dm's like here make new characters we're still going and they're like they're it ends up being that over time, one or two people survive uh, in in that area and they, they hold their ground and they do this for like three weeks. And then they have a group of like 30 people who have survived the Orc Armageddon. And then those are the characters that they then play from in the future. And it's just like these grunts from the military that get drafted into... Um, into the uh what's it the interrogators and so it's like the inquisition they get drafted into the inquisition <laughs> and so it's marines in the inquisition doing what marines do not what the inquisition does and oh, um, that's beautiful. it if you've never heard of it it's a hundred percent worth uh yeah i'm sorry luke i'm sorry i can't remember it off the top of my head right now i'm just i'm kind of well, see, see, look, if he messes up the story, it's even better because now that we're devoted yeah, to reading this thing, we're not it's, spoiled. Oh, <laughs> it is hilarious. And the 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 best part is like it reminds me so much of what's really good about D&D, &D, about how um it, uh, how a good DM will make the game 50 times better than a bad DM. But then how it's not the fact that you that you got the item at the end of the dungeon. It's how you as the group got through the dungeon. That's the it's actual the journey, not the destination. Exactly. A hundred percent. And the journey, and it reminds me a lot of all the really fun times that I've played D and D and it, it just gets my mind going through a lot of really fun interactions that you can do as a player, but then also how a DM can play with that as well. And it really, it makes me want to play D and D more, but I just don't have the time to, so reading people's stories about how how fun it is, it's it's good. So yes. so the all guardsman party is it um like fan made content or is it something that forty k? It's fan made. Likes? It is it oh, is okay. 
it is essentially it started out as 4chan D D green text okay. and <laughs> where all good things begin yes <laughs> however it is it was so long that it is like it's something like close to 90,000 words in length most novels are like 75,000 words so this is it, it's actually a really long journey it's pretty solid i mean i have it on my kindle and it's i've been going through it in in the spare time that i have and it's it's hilarious it's really worth it um, i'm like 10 percent of the way there on my dissertation nice i read a book this year yeah nice <laughs> and with I, that we have reached dan's bedtime yes it is late thank you everybody for joining us thanks those that get thank this you. on the podcast Hi, you have been an amazing guest. Thank yeah, you for joining thank us. Thank you for joining us. Anytime. And Absolutely. Dan, I know you're doing crazy stuff with school. Thanks for joining us as well. I know it's hard for you to get the time off. And, and Cam, I know you're doing crazy stuff with school, so thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and audience, we wouldn't be here without you. And with that, have a good evening, guys. Good. Actually, yeah. you know what? What I'm going to do... Is we're gonna raid Scotty really quick. Oh yeah, so. I was gonna say we keep forgetting to raid Scotty. Scotty. It's yeah, like Scotty's streaming right now. So oh, no. everybody that's Get with him. us, all twenty-three of you, here's Scotty. Let's ready to raid in eight, seven, six, five. With that, I'm gonna say goodbye. We're gonna go to this nice little logo. Goodbye. Click the button. Click the button.